Good day folks, in today's video we're going to talk about if you own the DJI Spark, should you upgrade to the Mavic Mini. The Mavic Mini is just launched by DJI, it's a great new drone, it's got a lot of really nice new features, but if you are thinking of upgrading from the Spark to the Mavic Mini, you will be giving up some functionality. In this video we're going to weigh all the pros and cons to see if it is worthwhile and maybe help you make a decision if it's worthwhile for you. So let's just jump right in and take a look. So DJI announced the Mavic Mini a week ago. This is a new ultralight drone that weighs 249 grams. And that's very important in a lot of countries because that's kind of the magic number. In many countries, drones that weigh 250 grams or more have to be registered and you have a lot more regulation. So we're going to talk about if you own the Spark, should you upgrade to the Mavic Mini? The thing you have to keep in mind though, even though it is a brand new drone and it does have a lot of enhancements over the DJI Spark, you would actually be losing some functionality. When it comes to size and portability, both drones are extremely portable. The Mavic Mini weighs 249 grams and the Spark weighs 300 grams. So there's not a huge weight difference when it comes to the two. The big difference is in many countries you don't have to register the Mavic Mini. If weight and portability are important to you, they kind of are both the same in that aspect. Now the Mavic Mini when in its folded state is a little bit smaller than the Spark just due to the fact that the Spark arms don't fold in. However, as you can see here when the Mavic Mini is folded out, it is actually a little bit larger than the Spark, but not by much. So let's talk about the benefits first of upgrading to the Mavic Mini. One of the main reasons why people would be upgrading is the camera. With the Mavic Mini you would now have a camera that is capable of recording video at 2.7K. You can also film at 1080 at 30 frames per second and you can also film at 1080 at 60 frames per second. The DJI Spark only does 1080 at 30 frames per second. The other important thing to note is that the bitrate on the Mavic Mini is a little bit higher than the Spark. The Mavic Mini records at a bitrate of 40 and the Spark records at a bitrate of 24. So the videos are going to be a little bit higher quality. Now the file sizes will be a little bit larger so if that is an issue that's something to keep in mind. Another big upgrade is the flight time. The Spark is rated at 16 minutes where the Mavic Mini is rated at 30 minutes so you can get a lot more flying time out of this drone. Now both those ratings are in ideal conditions. In real world situations you're not going to get that long. You can always take a few minutes off. So if 16 minutes of flight time has been one of your issues with the Spark, getting 30 minutes on the Mavic Mini would definitely be a good upgrade for you. There's also an upgrade when it comes to transmission distance. The Mavic Mini is rated at 4 kilometers, where the Spark, when using the remote, is rated at 2 kilometers. Now again, in real world situations, you're not going to get that, but definitely the Mavic Mini can fly a little bit farther and still retain a decent signal. Now when the Spark was first released, the only way to connect your phone to the controller was via Wi-Fi. Of course, people found out you could connect an OTG cable, and that helped with a lot of people's problems with their transmission. However, DJI did release a firmware update that made OTG officially supported. So in that aspect, both drones are equal. So another nice new upgrade on the DJI Mavic Mini is that it now has a three axis gimbal, whereas the Spark only had a two axis gimbal. Now, even though Spark only had a two axis gimbal, the footage was always very smooth. I never really had any complaints with that. But ideally a three axis gimbal will give you a little bit smoother footage. Now for the next thing, we're gonna talk about the uh, app in which you use to fly the drone. This can be a bonus or a negative depending on the Pilot. With the Mavic Mini, DJI launched a new app that you use to pilot the drone called the DJI Fly app. It's a stripped down version of the DJI Go 4 app, the one that you use to fly the Spark. It actually has some nice new features including a larger viewing area. It makes it easier to see what you're filming. It also has a feature on there where you can find locations to film at, which is also a nice touch. And that's what I said, it could be a negative or a positive. If you found the menus on the Spark very confusing and intimidating, you're actually going to really like the DJI Fly app. It's very streamlined, very simple and gives you the basic settings that you need to get a good flight and create stunning content. However, if you're a person who likes to go in and tinker with settings, you'll be a little disappointed in what is available. Now, with that said, the app that is available at this point is still in beta, so the final version could be different and have different settings. When I asked DJI, they told me that the official app will be released on the 11th. I have flown the Spark quite a bit over the last couple years, and I've flown the Mavic Mini a lot over this last week. I can say pretty confidently that the connection of the Spark to the remote is a little bit more solid where you're not getting disconnected as frequently and the video feed stays nice and smooth. Now both drones are Wi-Fi but I do find the Mavic Mini is just a little bit more solid. So as you can see there is a significant amount of upgrades and uh, some of those upgrades are going to be enough for a person to want to maybe upgrade from the Spark to the Mavic Mini. But like I mentioned if you decide to go from the Spark to the Mavic Mini you're going to lose some functionality. 
So first off, you're going to lose gesture control. That was one of the features of the Spark. You could control it with just a gesture. Now that was kind of gimmicking and not a lot of people used it, but that's something that the Mavic Mini doesn't have. The other thing you're going to be losing is basic obstacle avoidance. Obstacle avoidance wasn't very robust on the Spark, but it did give you a basic warning and did help out a lot of pilots. Now both drones do have positioning sensors on the bottom, and that helps with altitude when GPS is not available. So that's something to keep in mind if you rely on the sensors on the front of the Spark. The other thing, like I had mentioned, the Spark flies with the DJI Go 4 app, the Mavic Mini flies with the new DJI Fly app, and as mentioned, it is a toned down version. So you're not going to have all the advanced settings that you do with the Spark if you want to go in and adjust things. The other thing is that you're losing a lot of your intelligent flight modes. Now the Mavic Mini does have some basic flight modes, but with the Spark you're going to be losing your Active Track. So if you use Active Track on your Spark, you won't be able to do that with the Mavic Mini. There's also a few other modes that are not available on the Mavic Mini, such as Tap to Fly, among a few others. At this point, you can't use the goggles to fly your Mavic Mini. You can with your Spark, and again, that may be added with the firmware update, but as of right now, it's not compatible. Another nice feature that the Spark has that the Mavic Mini doesn't have is the ability to fly the drone with just your phone. If you're packing ultralight and you didn't want to bring a controller with you, you could pilot the Spark fully just from your phone. You can only pilot the Mavic Mini with the remote. That could change with the firmware update, but as of the filming of this video, it's not possible. The other nice bonus that the Spark has over the Mavic Mini is that it has these nice bright LEDs. It makes it nice and visible in darker skies or at night, depending on what country you fly in. Some countries you can't fly at night, but if you are flying in a dark environment, it's definitely a lot easier to see. The Mavic Mini just has one little LED at the back bottom there. Once you're up 20, 30 feet, that light is no longer visible. And for the last, thing here where the Spark has the edge over the Mavic Mini and that's to do with the propellers. The Spark has these nice twist and lock propellers as you can see they go on and off very easily. With the Mavic Mini you can see each propeller is separate and they're held on with a little screw. The bonus to that is you only have to replace the damage side but it's a little bit more tedious changing your propellers especially if you're out in the field and say you've crashed your drone or you've clipped a tree branch and you got to replace one of these blades having to fiddle around with little tiny screws and little screwdrivers definitely is not an ideal situation so as you can see both drones have their strengths and weaknesses there's definitely a lot of really nice upgrades going to the Mavic Mini but you are losing a lot of really nice functionality leaving the Spark I'm hoping this video helped you if you're maybe thinking about upgrading from the Spark to the Mavic Mini Maybe now after watching this video, it's a definite yes, or maybe now you're going to have to consider things a bit more. If you do have any questions about the Mavic Mini, feel free to ask me down in the comments. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, and we'll see you in the next one.